I'm going to be reading a uh, trucker's testimony. This is written by Gary. And I'm going to give it a new title. The existing title is uh, This One's For You. But I'm going to give it a new title for this particular video clip. And I'm going to title it I Was Sitting on the Top of 46,000 Pounds of Explosives. And I started talking to God. Uh, I can so identify with this brother. I can so identify. Maybe somebody out there listening to this can identify as well. Frustrated. Frustrated with God. You ever been frustrated with God? <laughs> oh, yeah. It was August 1995. But I remember like it was yesterday. My wife Linda was going to this little country church. We'd been having trouble with our marriage, so I decided it might help if I was to start going to church with her. I'd been going a few months and listening to the preacher, but it seemed like every week that preacher was standing up there talking about me. <laughs> Interesting how the Holy Spirit does that. I quit going. I didn't need that every week. That's called conviction from the Holy Spirit. After I quit going, things got worse. We were arguing and I told my wife to just leave. I'd had enough. Well, she did. <laughs> she went to her pastor's house and it wasn't long before he was calling me. He asked if uh, he could come to my house and talk to me. I really didn't want to hear what he had to say, but I really did like the guy. <clears throat> Got a little frog in my throat here this morning, so bear with me. So I told him I guess he could. It didn't take him long to get there, and when he showed up, he had a little book with him called Eternal Life. He asked me if he could read the book to me. I didn't want to hear it, but I didn't want to be rude, so I said, sure, go ahead. He opened that little book and started reading. As he was reading, I was looking at the TV, the ceiling, the walls, anywhere to keep from looking at that little book. Being the good servant of God that he was, he just kept on reading. When he came to the end of the book, there was a prayer at the end. He read that little prayer to me and asked me if I would like to pray and ask Jesus into my life. He said Jesus would give me this eternal life if I would just confess my sins to Jesus with my mouth and believe with my heart. I told him I didn't think I was quite ready for that. He said that's fine and maybe I needed to think about it. Then he left. Went on to bed because I had to get up at 3 a.m. to make a run to Northern Illinois the next day. The next morning I was uh, up by 3 a.m. and on the road by 4 headed to Galena, Illinois. I'd been driving about an hour when the tears started pouring out of my eyes. I remember I couldn't stop crying and I started talking to God. I said, God? if there even is a God. I'm not sure I even believe in God. But if you're real, I need you to show me a sign. I need a sign from God. Well, as I drove on, the tears finally stopped. About daylight, I was driving up I-55 when I looked out in the field and there was this little blue sign that looked like it had been out there forever. As I looked at that old weathered cracked sign, I read, Christ is the answer. <laughs> when I read those words, I thought, that's a sign. That's a sign from God. Then I heard this voice inside my head saying, that's not a sign from God. <laughs> that old worn out sign's been there forever. Besides, 
When I asked for a sign from God, that's not what I meant. I didn't mean I wanted a sign. <laughs> Excuse me for laughing. I can, I can just see this. I'm a very visual individual. I meant, I meant I wanted something big, something from God. So I started talking to God again, and I told God that wasn't good enough. That wasn't what I meant. I needed something else, something from God. So, so I wiped away my tears and drove on. I remember driving along and talking to God. By this time, I was on I-74 between Peoria and Galesburg. This little white van pulled up beside me. I looked down at this woman in the van. She looked up at me with a funny look on her face, rolled down her window, stuck her arm out the window, and pointed her thumb to the sky. I thought, what is she doing? What's that supposed to mean? Then, as the van went on by, I read on the back of the van, it was a church van. When I read those words, the first thought that came to my mind was that it was a sign from God. Then I said, no, God, that's not good enough either. That's not it. That's not what I wanted. I wanted something big, something that would leave no doubt that it was from God. I drove on with lots to think about, expecting at any moment something big would happen. I made it to my destination a little past noon. I started unloading my bulk tanker of explosives. As I was unloading, sitting on top of 46,000 pounds of explosives, I started talking to God again. I told God that I was still waiting for something big. I didn't really know what I was looking for, but I would know it when I saw it. I had visions of a big bolt of lightning shooting down from the sky. When you're sitting on 23 tons of dynamite, a bolt of lightning is the last thing you want to see. But I was ready and waiting. Well, nothing happened. I finished unloading and left. As I headed east toward Rockford on US-20, I started talking to God again. I remember saying, God, I'm still waiting for my sign for something big. I hit Rockford and headed south on I-39. About an hour later, I looked to my left, and out in the field was a great big sign. On this sign was the face of Jesus, and the words, this one's for you. <laughs> uh, as I looked into the eyes of Jesus and read those words, cold chills started running up and down my spine. Tears started running down my face. I started confessing my sins and trying to remember the prayer that was in that little book that Russ, my pastor's wife, had read to me. I prayed that prayer the best I could remember it. I prayed a whole lot more just in case that wasn't enough. The feeling that came over me was indescribable, but it was like I was floating the rest of the way home. Jesus had lifted all my burdens that day. I couldn't wait to get home, tell my wife, and call Russ who is now my pastor and best friend. The next day, the sky was bluer and the grass was greener. Everything had changed. My wife, Linda's, my wife's, oh, me and my wife's, Linda's marriage gets better each and every day. The problems of everyday life are still there, but I don't have to face them alone. Jesus is always there with me. Well, I can so relate to that. Uh, but God has a way to uniquely reveal his reality to us. And he can make himself so real, it's, it's almost unbelievable for anybody else hearing it to believe it actually happens. But I know God did a lot of that in my own life to reveal himself to me, that He making himself real. I was going to commit suicide, crying out, God, if you're real, I, you know, I don't want to take my life. I just want to find some happiness and meaning in this life beyond another miserable 40-hour job that I hate going to, and everybody else there hates being there as well, and 
you know, the routine of life, it just grinds you down sometimes. Well, I was missing uh, out on uh, what we all are missing out on, and that is uh, with a personal relationship with the living God, the creator of all things. And Jesus Christ is uh, one of the three persons of the creator of all things. He's the one who God sent from heaven, the God the Father sent from heaven to die on the cross, a painful death when he didn't have to, taking the punishment for the sins of each and every one of us so that we can be free from them, so they, that our sins are not separating us from an all-holy God, so that we can have daily intimate relationship with him. We were created to have daily intimate relationship with God. And if you don't have that, we uh, are always looking for something to fulfill that missing component of living. And uh, Gary found it. Does it mean that life is easy? No. There's someone called Satan. He has demons working for him, and their job is to make Christians the most miserable people on planet Earth. And yet, God's job is to give us life and life more abundantly. And so there's a battle going on, but that's neither here nor there. Having peace with the Creator, knowing that when your heart stops beating, you're uh, okay with the Creator and the Judge, and you will spend eternity with Him forevermore. There's nothing better than that, my friend, is there? If you don't know that yet, don't waste time. Do the same thing that Gary did. Get serious. Get serious. Ask Jesus to reveal his reality to you. He will, in his timing and his ways. If you're serious about serving him, if you're serious about living your life to please him. That's what life's all about. We were all created to please God. But, but we sort of assume... Uh, God must exist to please me. If I could just figure out who he is, it will work that way. We were created to glorify and please God. And we do that by admitting that we need a Savior. We do that by admitting uh, we have a sin nature we inherited at birth. And uh, if not having to suffer consequences when it's convenient, we love sinning. And uh, we may not be a mass murderer, but I tell you what, uh, we all have it in our ability to want to murder somebody who's hurt us painfully enough, somehow, some way. Uh, by the grace of God, he doesn't let that happen in most of our lives, but uh, I've lived enough life to know that uh, never underestimate your ability to want to sin <laughs> if you're driven to that point. Well, I'm preaching, forgive me for that. I need to say here that uh, there is a need for trucker and ex-trucker salvation born-again testimonies like the one I just read. Uh, there's a, an individual uh, from Step by Step Outreach. His name is Jim Barbarossa. He's an evangelist in uh, northern Indiana right now, and he has been used of God to publish um, a number of uh, Real Life Story Christian Testimony books, non-denominational Real Life Story Testimony books to give hope and encouragement to others, to point people to Jesus Christ. And uh, God has laid it on his heart to come up with a uh, Real Life Story Truckers Edition. And those uh, copies will be put out once that book gets published. And we expect that to be coming here hopefully in 2019. God's will be done, of course, but uh, that'll go out into truck stops around the United States and into Canada and, of course, any place else God wants them to go. But uh, we need uh, testimonies to, to uh, come up with a book. And so if you know a trucker, if you're a trucker or an ex-trucker or you know a trucker or ex-trucker who is solidly born again, saved, uh, ask that person uh, to prayerfully read the information below in the description section here of this clip and uh, have them write up their testimony and send it 
uh, in to where it can be looked at and if it's suitable, and I'm sure it probably will be if some time is taken prayerfully to write it up. The guidelines are down below in the description section. Um, and God can use uh, your testimony or that person's testimony in a book and, and seeds can be planted and watered and souls will come to Jesus through it. And uh, so uh, please ask God how he might use you to accomplish that. Uh, years down the road, it may not be that relevant, what I'm saying right now, but God might come up with a addition to of the truckers, uh, Real Life Story Truckers book, edition uh, three, four. Uh, if uh, Brother Jim Barbarossa, the publisher of these uh, books, and told God would change that, he and his wife Carla, um, <clears throat> God might want 10 or 15 additions down the road of truckers' testimonies. Uh, so never want to assume what God may or may not want to do. We'll, we'll, there'll be a place for your testimony if you take the time to write it up. Glorifying Jesus and simply sharing um, what life was like before you gave your life to Jesus Christ and what changes he's brought about that uh, you're just so thankful for and you want to tell the whole world about. Okay, So thank you for hearing me out. May God richly bless you.